My name is George Murichu and you're watching Youth Cafe on Sitam Church Online. I serve as the youth pastor at Sitam Woodley and I want to wish you a blessed Easter. You're watching today's video where we're talking about why the cross. Welcome. Studies and lots of research has shown that in order for adult learning to be effective, we have to start by answering the question, why? That's the central question. That's a question of what's the rationale behind something? What's the purpose? And uh, when we answer that question, those studies have shown that adult learning is optimized. It's most effective. You are more likely to get the most out of something when you understand the why than if you don't understand the why. So today, that's what we simply want to do. We want to understand what is the why behind the cross. You know, one of the preachers said that men die, all men die. So what is it about the death of Jesus that makes it unique? Uh, again, he said that some men die noble deaths, including martyrs. So what is it about the death of Jesus, even though it was a noble death, what is it about his death that makes it unique? Uh, one of the British authors called Malcolm Margaridge said that Jesus' death on the cross is the most famous death ever in history. And so today we want to turn uh, to scripture, to God's word, and try and understand why did he die? Why did he die on that old rugged Roman cross? There, there, there are so many forms of death. There are many forms of capital punishment. We know of lethal injections. We are acquainted with death by hanging uh, and gassing and that kind of thing. So what is it about this form of, of, of death that can give us uh, basically God's mind into uh, why he did it. So we turn to uh, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who ministered seven centuries before the birth of Jesus. And Isaiah predicted with clinical precision the things that Christ would go through on the cross. Uh, you might not have read much of scripture, you may not have interacted with God's word, but I want to encourage you to read the things that Isaiah talks about uh, in this season of Easter. He writes in Isaiah chapter 53, he predicts the sufferings of Christ. And in predicting, he also gives us the why behind the cross. So I'm reading from Isaiah 53, and this is what God's word says. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5 is the key verse. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Friends, what I want to submit to us today is that the reason behind the cross, the reason for the sufferings that Jesus underwent on the cross is given for us here, for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement that has brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. In other words, Jesus became our substitute. He took our place. He died the death that we deserved to die. He drank the full cup of his father's wrath. And uh, I just look at what happened on the cross and it's a beautiful exchange. It was a transaction where Jesus took my sin. He took your sin. He took it upon himself so that to all who believe in him, he'd given to us his righteousness. And we can just track from uh, Isaiah 53, again, verse three. He was despised and he was rejected. Why? That we, may be accepted by our heavenly father. He became the man of sorrows. Why? That we may know fullness of joy in the presence of our father. He was well acquainted with grief. Why? 
that we would know the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And on and on Isaiah goes with precision and he's predicting the things that Jesus would go through. But friends, I want to encourage you that Jesus went through all that suffering for you. It was a beautiful exchange from our perspective. He was despised that we would be esteemed. He bore our griefs. He took our sorrows. And verse 5 says, He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. This is the why behind the cross. This is the reason that Jesus left the glories of heaven and he was born in a manger, not in a palace, not in a mansion, but he was born in a manger so that you and I would be reconciled to our heavenly father. So I want to ask you today, have you accepted Jesus and what he did on that cross? Do you believe that he underwent all those things for you? Have you received him? Have you given him your sin? Have you traded your sin for his righteousness? Today, I want to just give you this invitation from his word and lead you to the King of Kings, lead you in a time of prayer. My prayer is that you'd trade whatever sorrows you have for his joy. You trade whatever shame you have. Remember, he was crucified naked on that cross, uncovered so that we would be covered by the righteousness of God. He was alone that we may know community. That's what Jesus did. It was, it was a beautiful exchange. He took all those things. And today, he wants to take your burden. He wants to take your sin. And no sin is too great for him. To forgive. So if you know that God is speaking to you, I want to invite you to surrender your life to him and I want to lead you in prayer. If we could just close our eyes and bow our heads and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I realize that I am a sinner and I see what you did on the cross. God, I pray that you forgive me and that you take my sin and give me your righteousness and make me a child of God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. If you've made that prayer, the Bible says that to those who believe in their hearts and confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord, they are born again, which means you're part of God's family. So I want to invite you to church, even as we celebrate Easter, and in case you have some questions, some comments, you'd like for us to interact, you can just look there by the screen. Those are our social media platforms. We want to engage with you, not just virtually, not, not just digitally, but up close and candid, face to face. So thank you for watching. Once again, my name is George Murichu. This is Youth Cafe, Sitam Church Online. God bless.